any other questions about a fibrillation? Because I would, I was going to talk first about how do we decide when to do an ablation and when to treat them a patient medically, and we got distracted with the ablation. So before we go back to well, on the, 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 on the complication part. side, what is that when you have a, one of these uh, dreaded pops? Is that just too much energy, too much heat? And is that something that you see in AFibs, or is that more in reentry tachycardias that you're burning because it's more of a focused burn? So, good question. Let me, yeah. Um, I'm looking for a, for a place to, to draw here. Let me just open a new. All right, so the question that Alan had was, sometimes you're doing an ablation and you hear a pop. Anybody knows what we're talking about? Uh, and uh, Shana and Alan, no, okay. So these are these are known as steam. Yes. Kind of. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Good. So let me draw a few basic myocytes. I like to draw them as if they were bricks, although. They're never like this, really. Looks like me playing basketball. Yeah. All right. So this is the inside. This is the outside of the heart. And you have a catheter here that is sending these elect these frequencies, these uh, waves through the through the cells. And it's heating up everything. <coughs> All right. So what you want to do, so cells start dying at 70 Celsius. Less than that, and you hurt the cell, but the cell, a lot of them will recover. <coughs> More than that, they're dead. So thank you. What happens at 100 Celsius? Anyone? Boiling. Pops. Boiling. <laughs> Boiling of water. Things are a little crispy. Yeah. What are the cells made out of? Water. 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 So if you go to a hundred Celsius or more, you're gonna start creating bubbles of air, which is what you see when you're making spaghetti. <laughs> and normally when you're cooking, all these bubbles will go out to the surface. Now, where would these bubbles go? They need to leave the cells. They need to move out. Well, they're going to go towards the path of least resistance. They're going to try to get out of the where they are because the pressure is really high. And that, then this bubble becomes a larger bubble, and then it finds a way out, and it pops out of the heart. Okay. If it pops out from here to there, then you leave a hole that is like that. Well, that is bad, but at least it didn't go through both ways, right? Well, how about if it did go both ways? Now you have a channel. So if you have a steam pop, usually it's fine, but you have the risk for the blood to exit the heart. So that's what we call a steam pump. When the heart heats up to a point that the cells are boiling. And this is a very sim simplification, right? <laughs> it's not like you're gonna have cells boiling inside of the heart, but it's, it's kind of, uh, the principle is, is true. Is that if the cells warm up a lot, you're gonna have boiling of the water, of the heart, of the cells, and they're gonna break. A lot of times it's okay because it either pops towards the inside or it pops towards the outside, and that's all. How loud are the pops? Loud. Uh, even from the control room, you can hear it. Really? Yeah. Wow. Wow. Really? Yeah. That's loud. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You could hear it across the room. Everybody in the OR is like, what was that? It's like, <laughs> diapers. Like, 
That's usually how it goes. <laughs> um, so do you have a temperature probe on the yes. on the ablation catheter? But that's still a guess, though, right? Because you got you got blood cooling it. You got things moving. That's not necessarily an, an indication of how warm it is within the middle there. Correct. The, so do you guys get that? Yeah. And that is the exact reason why these things happen. It's oh. because you send more power, but more waves down the heart than you think are going down. And the temperature here is not the same temperature that you're measuring here. So you normally set this at anywhere between, I've seen anywhere between 50 and 56 Celsius. If the temperature on the surface, and this is for some catheters, other catheters are different. So if the temperature on the surface reaches this point, the machine will shut off automatically. So you say, I want to warm up and burn everything, but if the temperature goes above 52, I want you to automatically turn off the power. Because I'm, not, I'm doing the ablation, I'm not looking at everything at the same time. I, relay, I, I have to um, trust my equipment, and the equipment helped me to prevent steam pops by doing this, by turning itself off. Another way to do it is you tell the machine, to send more power if you're not reaching this temperature. So you say, I want to deliver 30 watts, but stop me at 52 Celsius. So you start sending 30 watts, then you hit 52 and you stop and you stay here. Now you might stop at 25 watts because you already reached 52. And now the temperature wants to go to 53, so you come down to automatically, right? to 20 and now you're at 52. Now if you don't have too much power, if you don't have too many, if the waves don't go all the way down there because you don't have power, you're not making a good lesion. It doesn't matter what the temperature is on the surface. So what you want to find a way is to be able to send a lot of power all the way down there without heating up the surface because then it will stop itself. Blood, and blood cools down the tip. How easily do the myocytes repair themselves or close that gap without intervention? Um, that's a good question, and, and that's part of the reason why our procedures are long. So the question was, 